my students often ask what my husband and children eat for dinner while I teach cooking classes. Most of the time, it's some variation on the fish and veggie salad. Just like this, minus the artful arrangement of all the ingredients. <laughs> Let's start with fish. You can use any fish. Fish leftovers and canned tuna work great here. But the most tasty option is probably glazed salmon. I have a pound of salmon here. I like to cut it into portions of even thickness so that I can remove the thinner pieces before they overcook. Dry your salmon on paper towels. This will help it brown. Now let's make a very simple glaze. One tablespoon apricot preserve or some other sweet ingredient of your choice. One tablespoon soy sauce. I'm using Japanese style low sodium tamari. And half a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar. We'll be putting our salmon under the broiler, so you want to use a metal pan. Foil is your friend for easy cleanup. I sprinkle my pieces with a little bit of salt, since my soy sauce is not very salty. Black pepper is nice too. Dunk each piece of salmon flush side down into the glaze. You don't want a pool of glaze in your pan at this point, because it can burn under the broiler. If you have a wimpy broiler, most electric ovens do, forget broiling and just bake your salmon at 425. If you're not broiling, you can put all the glaze in the pan at this point. To estimate your cooking time, you need to measure the max thickness of each piece. Once upon a time, I've measured my index finger up to the first knuckle and now I use it to measure fish. My little one is two thirds of an inch. My middle one is one and a quarter, and the big one is one and a third. Thin fish takes about eight minutes per inch of thickness for most cooking methods, but you want to check it a couple of minutes earlier to be on the safe side. I've preheated my oven to 425 Fahrenheit. Now let's turn the broiling element on and place the fish under. You'll have to play with the distance. In my oven, the highest setting is too close and the next one down is too far. To get something in between, I use a little pan to elevate my baking dish. Watch your salmon closely. In three to four minutes, you should pick up some color. If some pieces are starting to burn before the other ones brown, cover them with foil. It's been four minutes and we've got color. So we can turn off the broiler and set the oven to 425. We no longer need the little riser pan and our little piece is ready to come out. But the bigger ones need more time. Pour the remaining glaze over the salmon and bake for another four minutes, giving us a total of eight minutes. Our estimate is 10 to 11, but better to check early. To test fish for doneness, try to pull the flakes apart in the thickest part. If they separate completely, you are done. You want the center to still be translucent at this stage. As the fish rests, the outer layers will finish cooking the center. Just make sure to put the fish together quickly after testing. Our bigger piece doesn't pull apart completely. I actually like it slightly undercooked, so I won't put it back in the oven. But you choose which doneness you prefer. I'll put the info on salmon doneness and safety on my blog. If your salmon doesn't want to stay together, prop it up with foil. While our fish rests, it needs five minutes, let's make a salad. Bean sprouts provide a nice, delicate crunch. I just hack them up a bit to make them easier to eat. This is a really fun radish known as the watermelon radish. In a minute, you'll see why. Let's peel it. If you're using regular radishes, don't peel their pretty pink skins. Trim it stale and slice it very thin on a mandolin. Mandolins are dangerous. That's why I'm wearing a cut-resistant glove. I'll link to both the slicer and the glove below this video. Isn't it pretty? Just like a watermelon. You can leave it in circles, but I need to help my four-year-old with chewing, so I'll cut it into julienne. Any salad needs some onion, in my opinion. I'm using a red onion, but scallions would also be wonderful. An herb is always good. I have cilantro today, but mint, dill, tarragon, parsley, and basil are all good. My favorite ingredient to put into this kind of salad is an avocado. It's the only ingredient in the salad my kids are not too happy about. It's 
kind of funny that they like radishes and onions, but not an avocado. But we have a very simple rule in our house. If you don't like it, you don't have to eat it. To dress our salad, let's juice a lime. A lemon or rice vinegar would also be great. I like to add a bit of Dijon mustard too. Normally, a vinaigrette would have oil in it, but avocado and salmon will provide all the fat we need, so I will skip the oil. A little salt. Pour it over a salad and mix thoroughly. I like to do this with my hands, since hard utensils tend to bruise delicate greens and don't get between the layers of thinly sliced veggies. Taste and adjust the salt and acidity. I needed some of both. Let's see how a salmon is doing. After five minutes, the medium piece is almost completely opaque. The biggest piece flakes very easily now, but still retains a bit of translucency. I think the salmon needs some quality assurance. Mm, perfect. All we have to do is flake it up and add to our salad. What's so fun about this dish is the layers of texture and flavor. You've got assertive crunch of the radish and the delicate juicy crunch of the sprouts juxtaposed with luscious salmon and avocado. You've got saltiness from the soy sauce, sweetness from the apricot preserve, acidity from the lime and bitterness from that radish, all coexisting in perfect harmony. The variations on this theme are infinite. Other produce I frequently use are bok choy, cucumbers, zucchini, asparagus, snap peas, oranges, Asian pears. Sometimes I add in quinoa or some other green. Sometimes a hard-boiled egg. Who knew cleaning out the fridge could taste so good? The biggest challenge is not to eat it all before the kids come home. For more family meals, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.